All right, I think it's going. <laughs> Hi, Amanda Little. Hi. We are going <laughs> to be doing an interview today just about civic engagement um, and how YBC can be a part of that. So could you please give a short introduction about you and what citizenship is all about? Yes, thank you so much for inviting me uh, here and to share the story of my work in citizenship with your community. My name is Amanda Little, as you know, and I am a professor of journalism and science writing at Vanderbilt University, and I am a uh, writer for Bloomberg. Uh, I cover um, climate and water and agriculture. Uh, but I've been an environmental journalist mo pretty much all of my career, and I teach um, journalism. And so this feels like maybe a little bit of a departure for me, but I founded Citizenship uh, in 2017, kind of the first iteration of it, uh, which was a, a group of families in Nashville, Tennessee, where I live, meeting um, every weekend uh, to discuss and learn uh, about democracy and how it works and our rights and responsibilities as citizens. And we were really focusing on our kids wh who at the time when I just found it out were between the ages of eight and 14 in our neighborhood, the, the kids in our neighborhood. And it was an immersive uh, experience of civic learning. And we met newly naturalized citizens and state senators and federal judges. And we did some arts and crafts. And uh, we talked in a politically diverse community about our values and shared um, uh, responsibilities as citizens and the importance of listening and agreeing to disagree and, and, and so forth. And the kids loved it and got a lot out of it almost as much as the adults did. <laughs> and then um, four years later, I founded, well, three years later, I founded citizenship.com, which takes the spirit of that effort and makes it uh, available to kids well beyond Nashville. And it's a media platform that has a mission of helping learn uh, kids learn to value their community, participate in democracy, and build the unity that our polarized society needs. Uh, so we, we've really been emphasizing nonpartisanship, um, and we aim to push civics education beyond the classroom. We aim to convene respectful conversations and publish powerful content by kids and for kids about building a brighter future and an inclusive, just, and sustainable society. Um, and our premise is that creatively engaged kids become citizens who vote. Uh, and we really aim to help um, raise the participation of young voters in our democracy um, substantially over time. Thank you so much. I think citizenship is a wonderful um, organization and just opportunity for youth. And I guess bouncing off that question is, what activities does citizenship host to interest youth in civic engagement? Thank you. I didn't tell you that part. I'm glad I didn't so that now I have a great <laughs> opportunity <laughs> to tell you what we actually do. I rolled out a pilot project last uh, year. I got a grant from Vanderbilt to just begin building this thing and um, had some volunteers and students. But basically, we just were doing um, this in our off hours. And the idea was, let's start by creating a series of creative contests for kids in which we invite them to create um, content. And the first contest was called Fly Your Flag. And we asked kids all over the country to design their own American flag, something that represents their America, symbols that represent their community, their value, their vision. Um, and so the idea is we could see, you know, flags from all the perspectives of kids ages 8 to 18 all over the country. Uh, and the submissions were so beautiful. And you can go to our website, citizenship.com, uh, to see some of the winning submissions. Um, but from there, we started uh, introducing other creative contests. One uh, was um, write your hero, write a civic hero story. Uh, tell us about the people in your community who inspire you most. Um, or people from, you know, history, figures you've never met, but who have really had an influence on your own life and how you think about community and nation and belonging. Um, and we just got beautiful, beautiful stories. And that led to yet another contest um, that was called Make Your Speech. And we asked kids to be the president of the United States for three minutes and tell us what they would say to their um, constituents and those who didn't vote for you. Um, 
And again, just wonderful submissions from all these eight year old and nine year old and 10 year old and 15 year old and 18 year old presidents um, who, who you know, really shared again, the gave voice to their America. Um, and our most recent contest is called um, Sing Your Anthem. And we just wrapped it up and it, uh, we asked kids to write and perform their own national anthems um, with that same kind of desire, again, to hear the voices of, of young people redefine um, American vision and values, um, not necessarily competing with our with the Star Spangled Banner, um, but you know, elaborating, elaborating on it, and bringing you know texture and diversity and insight and um, to you know the way we think about anthems and what they mean, um, and you know, it, it being inclusive of voices of all the voices that represent um, who we are as Americans, and um, and if I if I I will I will share that with you again. Please go to kidisanship.com to um, see these submissions and it's just amazing um what you know happens when you listen to a 10 year old sing their own national anthem um so you know so many of so much of the wisdom there that is no longer accessible to the adults running our country um there's almost a pre-partisan mindset you know a mindset that's thinking outside of this really polarized discussion about American politics. Um, it's so much more inclusive. It's so much more hopeful. And I think it's so much more capable of really important um, transformative change in this country to protect what's best about our democracy and to make it better. Yeah, thank you so much. I think youth have such a powerful voice and citizenship being able to highlight that and, you know, have youth use that and twist it into their own, you know, diverse and creative thinking is absolutely amazing. And so just kind of going said that I'm gonna have to <laughs> I'm gonna have to quote you on that. <laughs> <laughs> so bouncing to the next question is how can youth benefit from early non-biased civic engagement resources and or opportunities? That's such a great question because I think so much of what exists out there either is an effort to focus on in classroom curricula, right? Um, only uh, 11 out of 50 states, I believe, although the number is changing a little bit, but the only 11 of 50 states require a year or more of civics or government um, uh, courses to graduate in high school, uh, which is just an amazing statistic. And you've also probably heard that we as a nation invest about $50, 50 federal dollars per child in STEM education each year, which is a very important um, investment and in no way do I want to undermine that. But by comparison, for civic education, we invest about five cents per child. Um, and so uh, this uh, uh, recent near uh, Washington Post op-ed said, as the old saw has it, you get what you pay for, right? Um, and you know when you when you think about how little um, engagement there is in the U.S., so how much distrust of government there is, um, and how little vote you know engagement am among voters there is, um, it's just this huge blind spot in our curriculum. The question is, how do we not only require more robust civics education in all 50 states and in the classroom, but how do we create civics content that excites and inspires kids outside of the classroom, right? And and not just that, you know, textbook says here's how government works and here's how you vote and here's even we do need to educate. Here's what voter suppression looks like and here's how we move beyond that. But also, what do you think? Let, it, let us hear your creative voice, write stories, um, show us your visual art, design monuments, sing songs. Like, let's think about civics content beyond even the facts. Let's think about it as a space for imagination, a space for hope and creative um, power. And, and I think once you do that, once we expand our thinking around creative content, we're not just cultivating the ability to vote, which we need to do, we're cultivating the desire to vote and the desire to feel, uh, you know, uh, to, to connect with the rights and responsibilities of, of citizens. And I think when when there is no civics education and no really compelling, powerful, um, creative civics education, it's very hard to expect American citizens to respect our democracy, let alone improve it. 
Yeah, thank you so much. I think I completely agree with the question. And I love the quote, creative power, especially when it comes to kids and youth. Um, and so I'm kind of going to move the question over to how can parents and older adults get involved with citizenship or civic engagement? Yes, thank you. So we have been doing these contests really as a very early phase um, just to see what happens when you invite kids to create content. And we, the contests have shown us that kids, in fact, do create probably better content than any adult can create at any, you know, um, New York publication <laughs> uh, when I've worked at many of those. So, um, so yes, we kind of proved what we could do with the contest and we will continue with the contests. But our next phase is um, launching a youth civics magazine in which we are compiling and including a lot of the great submissions that we got because we got so many more submissions and can actually win prizes. Um, so we want to share, you know, the images and the uh, the words and the songs and the videos that um, kids are submitting to these contests, you know, beyond just assigning winners. We want to make that feel more communal and, um, you know, a space that, uh, you know, we can invite everybody to explore, not just kids, but also parents and aunts and uncles and grandparents, right? Um, so the best way to participate is number one, go to kidisanship.com, sign up for our newsletter, um, connect to our social media feeds on Instagram and, um, and YouTube and Facebook and Twitter, uh, and um, you know, encourage your kids and nephews and nieces and grandkids to um, participate in the contest if it seems like something they would enjoy. But also share the upcoming Youth Civics Magazine with your community, with your schools and teachers, um, with your churches and synagogues and mosques, uh, with your you know um, scouts uh, troops, with anyone who think you think would be interested. Um, because ultimately, at, at at the end of the day, my hope is that this kind of inclusive storytelling, this space for really creative content. Um, will help give rise to a shift in consciousness um, and lead to you know, a much healthier, more vibrant democracy. So, um, you know, adults can get involved again by following our content and encouraging kids, the kids in their lives to help create the content and also to consume the content. Um, we want this to be everywhere, all over the country. And right now it's very early stages. We've just gotten that we're just gotten, you know, the early stages of the um, of these contests going, and this is just the very birth of the magazine in um, January 2022. Um, so <laughs> there's lots of opportunity to get involved as this grows and scales, and um, and we just can't wait to see that happen. Yeah, thank you so much. I think we have a lot of you know adults and older teens who would really be open to you know, accessing these opportunities and even just pushing some of those towards, you know, youth that they know. Um, and before we kind of end the interview, do you have anything else that you'd like to share with us or any other information? Yes, I think um, that, you know, one thing I haven't mentioned is that we have brought in some public figures and celebrities into our contest as judges. We've brought uh, from both sides of the aisle. It's very important that we have um, really engaged leaders in um, you know, the progressive movement, the conservative movement, youth leaders, um, and, and, and try to connect young people and you know, middle and high school um, to these public figures. So we've had Representative Will Hurd from Texas and Susan Molinari, um, Republican representatives. We've had Beto O'Rourke and Andrew Yang. We've had John Favreau, who was the speech uh, writer for President Obama, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, uh, who is the star of Veep and Seinfeld, um, and uh, youth leaders like Lila Neves Lee um, of Young Republicans. And uh, in our for our anthem contest, we've had uh, you know, all these amazing musicians. And I just think it's so important to connect young people with, um, you know, p influential people who are living their you know, living out their rights and responsibilities as citizens in public um, and, you know, and and making that feel accessible, um, making the, that kind of those positions of influence feel accessible um, to young people. So we want to going forward have 
um, live streaming events on Instagram and Zoom where young people can connect to these public figures. We want to build citizenship camps um, where you know kids can come together either virtually or in person um, and do some of these exercises in you know visual arts and writing and video production um, going forward. And all and and most notably, we want to build a network of um, middle and high school newspapers and literary magazines where we're connecting all these content creators all over the country um, you know who are who understand the power of storytelling and as you said Lily who understand creative power <laughs> and um, and and the, at the at you know at, at the very source of, uh, of of the kind of soul of our democracy is um, the power of story um, and I had the great privilege in 2004 of interviewing Barack Obama, who was at that point Senator Barack Obama. He had just been elected into the Senate and I was writing for Rolling Stone at the time. And I asked him how he has had succeeded, how he had you know, won over the voters of Illinois. And he said, because I am a storyteller and I have um, the, you know, I, I have the great fortune of having a, a, a wonderful story to tell, a story that people can relate to, um, and that that crosses political divides. Stories can cross political divides, and stories are at the source of, of, of policy changes, too. Um, they're at the, the, the stories move capital in industries, stories um, drive markets, and stories even um, uh, have so much to do with scientific progress, um, with obviously with education. I just really have faith in the power of great storytelling to heal and transform and our, our country. And I know there's a lot of fear right now. And as someone who's been covering climate change and the environment, there's a lot of fear and concern, especially um, among Gen Z, under, understandably, that we're entering a, a world with a lot of problems that are hard to fix. Um, and that's true. <laughs> there are a lot of problems that, that are gonna be hard to fix over the coming years and decades. Um, but I really do believe that um, that lifting up voices, cr holding space for voices, uh, and and really encouraging powerful storytelling and content creation uh, can and will um, restore um, tolerance and um, health in in our society and in our democracy. Uh, but it has to come from the voices that matter most. Uh, and those are youth voices. I think the most important members of our democracy are the ones who are too young to vote. Uh, and that is probably the most important thing I can share <laughs> in all of this. Um, so yes, citizenship.com is where we are just beginning to build this um, really exciting space, hold space for young voices. And Lily, thank you so much. I think your voice matters a great deal and I am hopeful that you will um, collaborate with us and cr help us create content and help us build this thing. Yeah, of course. As soon as I, you know, came into YVC government and I met all the amazing council members that, you know, I've shared stories with and they've shared theirs, I was like, you know, citizenship is the place to go to really, you know, spread the mission that we have even in our small community. Um, so ASYVC, the YVC students and faculty staff, all thank you so much for having this interview with us. And we know you're super busy with all the amazing things you're doing. Um, so we hope we can collaborate in the future and maybe even partner in some events or yes. you know, blogs. <laughs> so that. Yes, thank you so much. And we hope that your, you know, Thanksgiving break is amazing and we can thank connect you. more in the future. Yes, I give thanks for you and your community and I look forward to collaborating down the line. Thank you all and thank you, Lily. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.